if she eats our pond plants, sayonara to goat. Hear Willow crying for you, Penny. How did that non-stick ramp do for Penny? Pretty good. All right, let's see for Luna. Morning, Willow. You want some milk for breakfast? I bet you do. Let's see. How's the stump doing this morning? Still there. Smells like a stump. Dad, can you go help me pour a bag of pellets, please? Okay. She jumps up it. She can't come up. Was that because last time she came over and took her drink from her, and then everything just went crazy. Don't drink from mom. Nope. <sighs> She's gonna ask to stay out here. Dad, can you please pour a bag of pellets? Okay. You like that? Hey. Does no leash needed, and now that she's got this ramp, she's a professional. Yeah, let's see. Oh, Willow. Willow, don't even try it. <laughs> <laughs> Willow wants to try the ramp for Luna. Okay. Look at that non-slip ram. Go give her some milk first. Let's see if she drinks some milk. Hey guys, stop putting more and more pellets in here. See how this is like way too full of pellets? I just put them in. I know, but that's that's too much. There's an egg down there. Oh, there's more eggs down there, chicken. Stop pecking it. The robot arm. <laughs> yep, that cast looks like it's ready to come off, running around like she's got no cast at all. Stop chewing me, you always chew me, you piece of garbage. Okay, you're still a good goat. Don't chew my pants. They're huge. <laughs> no, they're good though. There's a lot of them. Yeah. I'm surprised at how many are here. These came all the way from New Jersey. Wow. <laughs> so they only have the best. Ones. They only have the best out there. <laughs> Just true. ask Jack, he'll tell you. Okay. But they, they probably have a weird accent. Yeah, yeah Jersey, so I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you want to like kind of explain some of them? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a Yerba Mansa. What this has is a cool little white flower and it has kind of a unique fragrance. This guy will spread out and crawl under the deck. Over here we've got uh, Creeping Jenny. So that'll spread out and just kind of soften up this area. This is canna lily. Oh yeah, I, I remember you telling me about that. this is going to be pink. Oh cool. So these actually came local, these dark canna lilies. Okay, cool. These are red stems. This is a really popular pond plant. It gives some height and, you know, blows yeah. around wispy in the wind. This is just a green canna. These are the iris. This is gonna be a dark blue. Okay, cool. Yeah. Here we got the Yerba Mansa again. Oh, so that's right. soften up this area. It's actually gonna go right here, but I'm trying not to disturb the bees too much right now. Okay. But these are friendly bees. They're just getting their drinks of water. We can pet them. They cool. don't they don't have a problem with us being around. These if you let them, they'll kind of get up to this this elevation. But they also stay low and spread out. So we got lizard's tail over Ooh. here. Another lizard's tail, so that'll soften up these areas. We've got some horsetail rush. I think this one, these guys are the ones that struggled the most with the uh, Oh, the which trip. is the transport, yeah. yeah. 
Here's a dwarf Egyptian papyrus. So it's a giant head. And oh, then we've nice. got papyrus over there. Oh, okay. Those are some those another dwarf species over there. And then we've got some more canna lilies. And then this one is the purple prickler rush. Oh, okay, cool. Right here. Here. Hey, you put the lilies in there, didn't you? Got the lilies. We've got some Juan Visa lilies, which are my favorite. They have this beautiful bloom, wow. pink on one side, white on the other. All of these pads will start surfacing okay. and floating. And you'll notice quickly. Uh, because the temperatures are warming up, yeah. you're gonna start getting some big uh, clusters around. Okay. So what this is gonna help do is gonna help shade your bog area, Okay. keep the water temperature cooler, minimize the amount of algae growth that we'll have up here. So cool, I'm excited. Yeah, and I know the plants are excited to get out of and find I space. know, I bet. <laughs> A lot better to be in Arizona than New Jersey. <laughs> I agree. Well, you guys, you, as you guys know, Ralph is our pond guy. He's been our guy that have, has helped us from start to finish with this pond, and he has a YouTube channel actually. So, what's the name of it again? Uh, Pondscapes AZ. Okay, Pondscapes AZ. So you're gonna get lots of info on building ponds, lots of different designs, like yeah. tons of different situations, even yeah. a pool conversion. Pool which conversion is really coming soon. interesting. So. Yes, absolutely. Very cool. Awesome. Okay, come on. Stop on a stop. Come on. Hop, hop, come like buddy. Willow. All right. This might be Willow's last day to play by the pond. If she eats our pond plants, Sayonara to goat. And it looks like she didn't eat that one. This could be your last day playing by the pond, Willow. You're not allowed to eat our pond plants. Which plant do you guys think looks the tastiest? Okay, just keep going around the pond and see if she smells each one. Come on, you can do it. Smells good. Good, glad it doesn't taste good. Looks like she doesn't like them. She's so curious about what's behind the white door. <laughs> <laughs> we always go inside there. Cheers, Mom. There she is. Well, you guys, I have some bad news. I think Mabel has a mastitis infection. I've actually never had a goat that has ever had a mastitis infection these last 10 years that we've owned goats. And I know, I've always known that it comes from poor handling practices. So like the kids aren't washing their hands good enough or they're not cleaning off the teat good enough. Or it could simply be that we've fallen out of the practice of doing a teat dip. So what people do is after they milk their goats, they'll dip the teat in something that's kind of disinfecting or kind of protects the end of the teat opening. I used to do it. Just as you get doing stuff longer and longer, you kind of fall out of the practice of it. We're not gonna do that anymore. My neighbors are having a birthday party, so you can hear what's going on over there as well. But I have a few things I'm gonna try. So last night she had a fever, and then this morning it went down. And we tried a few different natural remedies. I gave her a bunch of herbs that are antibiotic in nature. I also gave her some fresh garlic. And I've been using essential oils. So I've been rubbing peppermint on her, and I also did a little betadine teat dip as well. And the trick to doing this naturally, helping get rid of this naturally, or at least from what I've read, is that you should milk her quite frequently throughout the day to help really massage and relieve any pressure in the udder. So we've been doing that. 
And yeah, her fever is already going down and she's already acting a little bit happier. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test again. I know it'll still come up positive, but I kinda want you guys to see it. This is kind of a cool little test you can do. So yep, definitely this side is actually a little bit better. It was dark blue last night, now it's a little greenish. So I'm thinking that the infection is slowly coming out. That's a good thing. sucks when your animals get sick but usually it can be remedied pretty quick if you can catch things early and then go to town on some of the remedies so I'll list a link below to a video if you ever want to bookmark it or actually it's just an article how to take care of mastitis and goats because it does happen I've done a ton of stuff today. I think uh, tomorrow we're gonna get started on oiling up this deck before it rains, although it hasn't rained in Arizona for like two months. So I'm super excited because these plants are gonna start cleaning the pond and they're gonna start competing with the algae for food. So that'll be fun to watch. All right, we'll see you later. Bye.